Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to the Computer Craft Tutorial Series, Episode 7. Today I'd like to cover um, a little bit of uh, some new types of variables that I didn't touch on in the past. I'd like to talk about arrays and what they are, and then I'd like to get into command line arguments that you can use to pass information to your programs directly from within the command line. So you can actually, you know, send data to the program as you're running it so that you can do a little bit fancier things. Uh, in the past, for example, you saw me have to ask a question before I was able to get an answer and tell the turtle how to move a certain number of blocks or what to do, but with command line arguments, you can just do that all in one line and you don't have to uh, have a little bit of a wait there. So we're going to talk about those command line arguments and how they work as well as arrays because arrays and command line arguments are a good thing to go together. So without further ado, let's get cracking. All right, let's talk about arrays. So I've got my computer here, and I'm going to edit a program called arrays. Sounds like a smart name for a program. An array is a type of variable in which you will pretty much have one variable that can store multiple pieces of information. Um, so basically, you can just have one name of a variable, and I'm going to define one right now. All right, guys, before I get uh, talking too much about these things called arrays, I should note that the official name for them in Lua is tables. Now, I refer to them as arrays because that's how I was taught, but in Lua, they're called tables, but they pretty much function very similar to the way arrays do in other programming languages. So if you're familiar with what an array is, you're in pretty much a pretty good place to be. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about what they are. Arrays or tables allow you to store multiple pieces of information within one variable. So let's say we want to create a bunch of variables for colors. Uh, so I could create a local variable called uh, color1, and we could assign that to blue. And I could have another local color2, and that could be red. And then uh, local color3 is equal to yellow. Cool? Yeah. That's all well and good, but you know what? Maybe I don't want to define all these different variables. Uh, you know, there's 16 colors in Minecraft. Uh, creating 16 variables for all the different colors would be a little time consuming. Also, maybe I want to use this variable or the contents of this variable in some kind of uh, you know logic system like looping, which I'll show you guys in a bit how you can do this using tables. But for now, uh, let's just pretend that there's too many variables to define. And we want to define just one variable that stores all the different colors. Well, to do that, we just have to type the command local to define a new local variable, and then we'll call it colors. That sounds nice and easy. This is a brand new variable, but instead of just giving it um, some information in quotes, we're going to put what's called a curly bracket around around this thing. Um, this is a curly bracket. It's created by holding shift and the bracket key uh, to open it up. And anything inside these curly brackets is what's going to be placed in the variable. Um, we're going to create a bunch of different strings. So I'll create one that's called blue, and then red, and then yellow. And I can even go so far as to do green and keep on going. Pretty cool. So I'll stop there. Four colors is pretty much good. I'm not going to type them all out. This will give you guys the idea of how the system works. Okay, so now we've got this variable called colors, and inside of it are four separate pieces of information. Now, a good way to remember how an array works is just to think of several blocks of information. So um, this isn't code that I'm about to show you, but uh, let's see if I can figure this out in the world. All right, guys, so a good and easy way to think of arrays is just like, uh, you know, a couple empty buckets, right? And uh, anytime you want to create a new table or array, you've got pretty much a blank area of space. And when you create a new one, it creates one empty bucket for you to store variables or information in. And then once uh, you've stored information in there and you want to put new information onto the array, it just adds on another empty bucket. Now you've got two empty buckets that you can store information in. Uh, so for example, I could have a torch in one and I could have a lever in the other. And, uh, you know, finally I could add a third one, and it'll keep adding on. So that's pretty much what I've done, is I've created uh, three or four components here inside this colors variable. And in the first bucket, I put the word blue, and in the next bucket, I put the word red, and then yellow and green. Now, they don't have to all be strings. You could put numbers in there. You could even mix and match, so you can have some things be strings and some things be numbers. That's not probably... a you know, good practice, but it'll work, won't hurt. Now, if you want to reference your um, array, all you have to do with this basic setup of a table slash array, you can do that by referencing the number. So let's go ahead and do the following. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type the command print and then colors bracket one. Now those are square brackets, not curly brackets. So let's go ahead and run the program arrays. You can see that it printed out the word blue. And the reason that happened is blue is the string variable inside the first position 
of the array or table called colors. Okay, so your very first position here is referenced by the number one. And the next position obviously is number two. And your next position of course is number three, etc, etc. So if you want to reference the information stored in each bucket of your array, you just have to give it the number. Now position number two, of course, is red. So when we print this guy, we'll be able to print red. Perfect. So let's put this neat little printing ability to good use. You guys remember how a for loop works, I hope. So let's do 4i is equal to 1 through 4 do. And then we'll put an end right here. And then we'll say print out colors bracket i. So what this is going to do is it's going to loop through and it's going to print out colors bracket 1 which is blue and then it'll loop through again and do colors bracket 2 which is red and then yellow and green. Let's give it a shot. Blue, red, yellow, green. Perfect. Now you wouldn't really be easily able to do that in a simple for loop like this if we had our colors broken up in these variable types up here uh, with color 1, color 2, color 3. Um, it would not be appropriate for you to write print colors i because that's not going to work. All right even though the number here is not going to append properly. So if I ran this program now, it would be like, hey, I don't know anything about colors i. So this array function is really nice for for loops, or if you want to store data and loop through it. Um, there's also a bunch of other neat functionality to it as well. Um, now, you don't have to always go with the number assignment if you don't want. So let's check this part out now. So I'm ready to define a new variable called color codes, and this is going to be another table. But instead of just defining it directly like I did up here, I'm going to actually associate the words or the colors associated with um, red power bundled cabling to their numerical value. And again, I'm only going to do it for a few because I don't feel like typing for the next five minutes. So let's do this. Um, if I inside these square brackets put white equals one, Okay, that's going to define in here, it's going to give an index to the um, first thing inside the array. And uh, the way that works is it's going to basically assign the value 1 to the index of white. So this is a little bit backwards from what we just saw a moment ago. And next I'm going to assign orange equal to 2. And uh, let's just for one more assign magenta equal to 4. That sounds good. And a curly bracket to end it. So now we've got these color codes. So in order for us to reference these color codes, what I can do is color codes. So let's do a print command here. Cool. And then I'll run the arrays program. Now since we're defining a string value as the um, component here, you have to make sure to put double quotes around that. So I put white inside the double quotes, and now when I run the program, it'll work and show me that white has a numerical value of 1. So I've pretty much changed the way this works a little bit, and I can go ahead and throw orange in here, and that should spit out the number 2. And finally, magenta should spit out the number four, not the number three, because we're not referencing the position inside this array or table, but we're referencing the number that's assigned to each value. And I'll show you this in our little system in a moment there. Cool? So this is basically what I've got. Your first bucket is being referred to as white instead of just the number one. And your next bucket is being referred to as orange instead of just number two. And the last bucket here is being referred to as magenta instead of the number three. Um, and then inside each bucket is the value of one, two, and four. Make sense? I hope so. Goodness, I hope so. Now, if you really want to get fancy, you can use another for loop here to list out all the components of a table, both their um, the keys, or the reference number here, and the value stored in it by doing the following. For key, comma, value in pairs of, and then you pass in the array, color codes. Do. Print, in parentheses, uh, the key, which is uh, the thing on the left, dot, dot. Remember, if we're uh, concatenating strings or putting them together. And then I'll put uh, an equal sign, and then another dot dot, and a value. Let's see how this runs. Cool. So uh, it's not going to order it in any particular order, as far as I've ever been able to tell. Uh, there might be a way to 
properly order them. Uh, but basically it's going to spit out orange is equal to 2, magenta is equal to 4, and white is equal to 1. So it's going to tell you what um, information is stored inside that table. So it's a neat little way to associate stuff. And uh, finally, the one last note that I'll note, um, if you guys aren't confused, cool. If you are a little confused, this part might be even more confusing. Uh, w one of the types of va variables that you can store inside a table is another table. So you can have um, nested tables uh, where it gets a little bit more complicated. So you can have something like uh, local stuff is equal to bracket um, blue comma another bracket and then you can have like I don't know whatever you want stuff one stuff two close bracket green so here we've got a um, string, a table of strings, and then finally a third string as um, your table contents. So you can get pretty in depth. And to reference this, um, you would do uh, stuff, let's just do this, uh, print stuff bracket one should print blue. And then print stuff bracket two bracket one should print stuff one bracket two bracket two should print stuff two and then print stuff bracket three should print green let's see if I did this correctly see blue stuff one stuff two green so complicated but cool so now I did promise you guys command line arguments, didn't I? Yeah, I think I did. Uh, so let's take a look at those guys real quick. Now remember, um, in the past we've written some turtle programs, for example this one here, uh, that does some cool stuff. So let's edit the forwards command. And remember the forwards command um, will ask you uh, how many blocks do you want to move forward and then it reads in the information that I give it. And then it loops through and runs forward that many times. Remember that program? If you don't, I'm going to run it right now. How many blocks? Three. And it's going to move forward three blocks. Nice and simple. Well, I'm going to uh, use command line arguments to make this a little bit easier. So let's check out how command line arguments work right now. And the reason I showed you arrays first is because command line arguments are arrays. So let's edit the forwards command. And what I'll do is I'll define a new variable at the top here called trgs. Okay? And uh, I'll just name it trgs because that's kind of a standard. But you can really name it whatever you want. Um, and I'm going to set that equal to um, the following. This little squiggly bracket. And I'm going to put three dots there. And what those three dots mean is go ahead and take whatever information is passed to this program when it's run by the command line. Um, and I'll show you what that means in just a moment. Um, now what I can do is um, define that the first thing that comes in is known as trgs bracket one. So we'll say, um, let's define a variable called numMove equal to trgs bracket one and local extra is equal to trgs bracket two. Cool. And then we'll print um, first variable numMove second extra. And go ahead and run this program now. Okay, and what should happen is, first off, if I were to just run forwards by itself, um, it's going to give me an error. And the reason for that is I haven't properly protected against not putting in any information into my command line arguments. But don't worry, we're not. that would just be a simple if statement. You could say, you know, make sure there's some value inside numMove. So uh, the error message there is to be expected because I pretty much didn't properly write the program because we're just demonstrating for now, right? So instead what I'm going to type is um, forwards and then I'm going to give it two pieces of information. Doesn't matter what I type here, I can type uh, the number five and the word hello. And you'll see that the first thing is number five and the second thing is is the word hello. So basically what happened in the code there, and I'll tell it to move zero blocks forward, um, is that the first thing I typed after the name of the program went into this variable trgs1 and then that was assigned to the numMove variable, nice and simple. And the second thing that was stored in the variable was trgs2 and then that was put into an extra variable. And these guys aren't even really needed if I don't want to. Um, I can reference them directly from right here. 
So I could just get rid of numMove and call it trgs bracket 1. And second can be trgs bracket 2. 5 and hello worked again. Pretty cool. So this is the way you can pass information into your program as you're running it instead of having the program prompt you for, for information. And it's a lot nicer in the program that I've written here because let's check this out. So instead I'm going to get rid of this second line here and just close it up. And I'll make the printout be moving number spaces. That should be good. Okay, and down here I'll tell it to loop instead of within this thing. I'm just going to edit out these words. So remember, by putting the double uh, dash in front, it makes it um, pretty much a comment, which means it won't actually execute this code. And instead, I'll do a for loop of one through trgs bracket one. Cool. So now we should be ready to give this a little bit of a test. So I'm going to save and exit, and I'm going to type forwards five. And what this should do is it should take that number five and put it right inside the for loop and run moving forward five times. And remember, I said moving and then the number I gave it and the number of spaces. So now I can run this forwards command ten times if I want and it'll move forward ten spaces. So a lot quicker to run your program this way um, as opposed to having a prompt for every piece of information you want to give it. You might want your program to go ahead and do something a little bit quicker. And that's kind of how the Go program works where we have Go back 20. Um, the first piece of information back is probably being passed to some kind of function within the Go program that determines how uh, uh, what direction to go in and then the 20 is how many times to loop. So guys, that about wraps up episode 7 of the Computer Craft tutorial series. Uh, today you've learned about arrays, or tables as they're referred to in Lua, which are ways to store more than one piece of information at a time. And I'll go ahead and save and paste bin put my arrays program if you want to go ahead and start messing around with it. And also I showed you guys how to use command line arguments using um, the forwards function that I wrote in a prior episode. I just added on to it so you can go ahead and do that. Um, so I'll go ahead and paste bin this guy as well. So you've got the links to Pastebin, go ahead and check them out. And I uh, hope you guys learned a little something more about programming in this episode. Uh, I'm hoping that this little thing here was useful to you guys. Go ahead and leave some comments. Let me know if, uh, if it was helpful to see this little uh, in-world representation of how the information is stored, or if it confused you more. I'd be interested to see how it made out. So this is Direwolf20 signing off. Take it easy.